Welcome to another episode of the So-Called Oreos podcast, the podcast where we discuss all the awkwardness, hardships, and hilarity that comes along with being labeled white on the inside and black on the outside, also known as an Oreo. And I'm Janae. I'm Kia. I'm Rachel. And I'm Amari. One day we're going to do this seamlessly without any awkward pauses because you we guys start- are going to be like, oh my God, they're so good. <laughs> um, how's everyone doing this week though? How 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 we feeling? Life update us, the girls. Yeah. I'm alive. That's good. And that's good. <laughs> that's great. You're alive. You're healthy. That's yes. you got we gotta remember like the small things. This week was like emotional for me, but I'll get into it later because it's I feel like it relates to the podcast episode, but okay. Okay. Um, that my half of the soul seven hoodie came. Your what? Um, my BTS merch. Uh, this is a hoodie. Um, that I got for the tour, which didn't happen because <laughs> COVID nineteen. Everybody. So I'm, you guys. At least, you, at least you got a part of them with you at all times. I guess. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. What about you, Rach? How was your week? Um, it was it was good. Friday was the two year anniversary of my older brother passing away. And um that was a very emotional day for me on Friday, but um what got me through it is just knowing he's in a better place, you know, mm-hmm. and being able to like reach out to friends and family. Um just knowing that it had that like support for comfort is always um, a good a good feeling. Um, honestly, it didn't hit me until like my sister hit me up and said, you know, today's anniversary, just like be a little like patient and nicer to our parents, you know, because they're probably like, remembering this day as well. And I was just like, wow. Um, I don't mean to like make the start of this episode so depressing but um overall I am doing good and I am happy again that um I'm able to to talk about it and um like let myself know that it's okay it's okay to cry and you know feel whatever I need to feel because that is very therapeutic and it's important especially for me to just let everything out so but again, overall, I am doing good. So, yeah, well, we're always here for you. So, glad you're doing better today. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, we once again, as always, want to just highlight the fact that things might sound a little grainy or look a little grainy for those of you, you know, peeping our YouTube, because <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's a global pandemic we're not going to get together and risk our lives to record an episode. Um, so just bear with us during this time. Okay. So Kia, what's new this week in Black History? <laughs> um, yes, guys, this week in Black History, I'm doing two events on July 4th because July 4th is coming up. And let's go first with July 4th, 1881. Booker T. Washington opened the Tuskegee Institute, a private historically black university in Tuskegee, Alabama. The university was home to scientist George Washington Carver and to World War II's Tuskegee Airmen. Um, And then we have July 4th, 1827. Slavery was officially abolished in New York State in 1799. New York passed a Gradual Emancipation Act that freed slave children born after July 4th, 1799, but indentured them until they were young adults. In 1817, a new law passed that would free slaves born before 1799, but not until 1827. So I just looked up that fact because um, I think a lot of times when, you know, we hear Juneteenth and we talked about that last episode, it's like Juneteenth, that was two years where the law, you know, the news of that law traveled to Texas. And I just think with this 
fact that slavery was abolished in New York State, they still tried to do like little laws and said you were still in indentured service. And a lot of people, you know, you just can't go from like slave to like have a house. Like you have to keep working. And a lot of those people continued to be slaves because they didn't know anything else. Um, so the fact that it was like, like it passed 1799 all the way to 1827, like that's literally like almost 30 years. So I just wanted to highlight that fact because I feel like it's still relevant to like what's going on now and it takes a long time for change to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it takes a lot of time for liars to stop lying apparently. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not free, oh but God, that's still that's indentured. So funny. Like you're still a slave, what? Yes, so-called <laughs> Oreo mo- merch. <laughs> like that. that has to go on it. <laughs> Absolutely should. Um, all right what's up with the black professionals we love yes so i just have one thing to say and that's work live <laughs> pose and i messed up the saying, so i'm gonna say it again live work pose um yes in a span of like three days i've binged both seasons of pose and i'm officially obsessed with the entire cast uh so happy that the show exists in the first place and actually kind of disappointed in myself as um someone who considers her ally for like not knowing as much about this exceptional community as um, Pose kind of exposed me to. So just like watching the show kind of opened my eyes to, you know, what goes on in the LGBTQIA community and like the whole systems of like house mothers and houses and ballroom um, and like having your chosen family. So uh, if anyone hasn't watched it, I highly recommend watching it um, and just shouting out the entire cast. Uh, MJ Rodriguez, India Moore, Billy Porter, Dominique Jackson, Haley Sahar, Angelica Ross, Brian Jamal Swain, Dylan Burnside, Angel Bismarck, Curiel, Janet Mock, and everyone else involved in this production. You are amazing, beautiful human beings, and I'm exceptionally inspired by everything you do. Um, so, yeah. Go watch Pose. This is not an ad, but like, you know. But if you want it to be. (laughs) Great, (laughs) though. Yeah, I I heard so many great things about Pose. I haven't watched it yet. It's on my list. Um, I'm literally slow, slower than, you know, anything when it comes to watching things. I'm just now like on season two of Stranger Things. Don't kill me. (laughs) That was like two years old. I'm just like slow because I don't watch TV that much. But um, if you guys do have HBO Max, there is a show called Legendary and it's actually um, like competition ballroom. So that's another thing similar to Pose. But and uh, Megan Thee Stallion is actually a judge on that. Okay. Yeah. So I've actually like since like watching Pose, I've started to like go. So I watched um, this documentary on on Netflix called Disclosure, which just talks about uh, trans representation in film. And that was really um, educational and enjoyable. And then I'm gonna, next on my list is I think The Life and Death of Marsha P. Johnson, which is another documentary. Um, So even though Pride Month is coming to an end, I highly recommend everyone keeping on this train of, you know, keeping yourself informed and, you know, reaching out to the LGBTQIA community and just kind of like, you know, doing the work as an ally. Yeah, that's on my list too. Um, I think I might try to watch that today. If I have a little time. But yeah, it's Pride Month. Woohoo! <laughs> I've really been trying to work on my wrists, but I think I'm too stiff to even try to Vogue properly. <laughs> Ooh, today in my workout, we did Vogue arms. So it's like, it's like a workout, but it's like, like the, it's really just like Vogue. The- yeah. And it's just like you keep and like your muscles get like fatigued, so you're like keep doing it. But that that's is in my workout. And I was like, it's Pride Month. (laughs) (laughs) Do it for the gays. Oh Lord. (laughs) Um, I guess we should just dive right into our um, topic this week, which is um, dating during COVID. Um, dating and relationships, which I feel like we touched on. We were all like, yeah, why not? Because I feel like we've all had kind of conversations, like side conversations about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah. I think it's just like a topic that comes up and then we're like, let's just do an episode yeah. about it because I feel like it's yeah. it's we relevant. It all the time. Yeah, yeah, we talk about dating all the time mm-hmm. and COVID. Literally. So Mark and I went for a walk the other day. What did we talk about? 
dating, mm-hmm. sexuality, relationships, the sky. All the good stuff. It's always relevant. <laughs> Bye then. Yeah. Um, so the Iris dating app um, actually hit Amari up um, and they sent us over some stats. They surveyed a thousand singles living in New York um, to uncover some key trends of the of what the future of dating looks like, um, especially during COVID. Um, so we just wanted to read like some of their interesting stats that they got. Uh, their first one um, is that singles are not lowering their dating standards during quarantine, but men are, and that nearly 25% of men were more likely to lower their standards during quarantine. Um, Which is crazy to me. I think that's crazy. Literally crazy, but I can't say that I'm surprised. And I do, I do, quick PSA, quick PSA, quick PSA. This is not a man-hating episode. Let's just Do we have it. to say that? I feel like if you listen to this podcast, you you know we just keep it real. We just keep it real. We just but men, it. but a lot of men will be like, so y'all okay, don't care. listen. <laughs> a little bit sensitive. If we say we're not bashing men, then take it out of the way. Continue with your PSA. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Basically, we're not bashing men, but men, be honest with yourselves. Y'all know that y'all have the tendency to be a little lazy. If you ask a guy now, like, what is he looking for? Anything. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> she's, she's not difficult. She's pretty. And, uh, uh, uh that's it. <laughs> like, it's just, I'm like, how much lower can your standards get? The fuck? I think it's so funny, though, because of anything, COVID should raise your standards. Like, if you're going to be in my house or near me, like, yeah. we need to get your testing results like we need to, like all your testings have you been tested for covid like all the shits like it, i feel like it should be raised if anything yeah, it should be raised a think... checklist right. yeah i feel like they're just like um maybe lowering it because they don't want to be alone so they're like you'll do yeah. like i'd rather be like you know but, i feel like that might honestly, be it i always thought men had lower standards i they do i always thought that they did they do, because if you really, if we really ask guys, what do they want? You know, the first thing is looks. Yeah. And then it's like, I don't know, maybe her not being difficult, like that might be it. Especially when they're like dating around, talking to multiple women. If your standards yeah. are that high, how are you talking to like eight girls? You can't. There's no way. Yeah, so <laughs> how that happened? I'm I, can- I get that. I'm continuously amazed by men's like inability to do like small menial tasks sometimes, but their great ability to juggle multiple people at the same time. And I'm just like, a part of me is kind of like in awe of it because I'm like, I wish I had the skill to compartmentalize things like that. I wish I did. I wish I could be that person. I wish I could be. I'm dating six people at once, and I feel completely fulfilled and happy juggling. Too fucking emotional. I'll get, I'll get I don't think that's you don't think that's like um I feel like that's not normal like I feel like we live in a culture where it's like people want to normalize dating around so much and I never got that like do you guys remember an insecure and everyone was like dragging Molly because Andrew was dating around and I was like it's not crazy for her to want him not to date around and like no. for me personally I'm not I don't ever date around. So if I'm talking to you, I'm literally only talking to you. It was crazy um, for Molly because Molly just showed interest five seconds ago. And now she wants to now she wants okay. to talk about his dating life because it's like, I get that you just showed interest. So I think for that, that's why people were dragging her. OK, I just I just don't like the normalization where it's like, well, you should always be talking to uh, multiple people. And I was like, that's not for everyone. I just think it's OK mm-hmm. if you want to talk to one person. I just don't see why we're in a culture where it's like, nope, you got to talk to at least three guys. And it's just like. If you're not, you have a life. You're. It's not easy to just talk right. to three guys. To me, it's question. what kind of person you are. Like, not for, I think for some people that works. But the people that that works with should be matched up with other people who are cool with dating multiple people at yeah. once. And I also think that you have to be honest with yourself. I know personally, um, I can take responsibility for my own actions. And I would kind of be like, well, I could give this a try. Knowing good and goddamn well that like I really can't. I would still try and then end up getting hurt. Um, so I think we just have to be honest and like 
if you're talking to someone and they're like, oh, well, I'm talking to other people too. And you know, you can't do that. I think you just have to be honest with yourself and like kick that person to the curb. Rachel, you said you had a question at one point. Yeah, I wanted to ask, um, so since you guys are like dating around, um, do you ask that question in the beginning? Do you bring it up in the beginning or you just see how it plays out? Um, Like how long you guys, depending on how long you guys are talking and like dating? I I let it play out because I'm still like, I'm still sussing that person. And so until I am in a place where I feel like I just, I exclusively want to talk to this person, um, then I'll bring up that conversation. But if I don't have those feelings and I'm not like wholly invested, then I won't bring it up. And that also like, I think that's like the, the, the timing of that depends on, on that person. Like I could be with someone for a month and I'm like, I'm really interested in him. Don't want him talking to anyone else. Like we need to have that talk or it could be like three to four months later. I don't know. Um, I think in, in the beginning, when I first started like dating, excuse me, I would try to kind of play it cool and not really bring that up or talk about it. Um, but I always found myself landing in a place where I start to get emotionally invested. And then I ask that question and the guy, I'm already emotionally invested. So it's hard for me to kind of walk away when you ask someone, hey, like, are you looking for something more serious or do you just want to hang out? Um, and by that point, normally the guy would be like, oh, I'm, I'm just cool with hanging out. I don't really want anything serious. Like all 25, 26 year old guys are, right. sorry, not all. I don't want to generalize. There are men out there that want relationships. We just haven't met them yet. We haven't met them yet. So anyway, um, now, since being in quarantine, I've been doing some soul searching and thinking about what I want in a relationship. And moving forward, I think I'm going to try just being upfront, mm-hmm. like right out the bat, right out the gate, sorry, and say like, I'm interested in finding a relationship, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I'm not saying that we have, you know, one text conversation and I'm like, yeah, I don't have a relationship. No, but. I, I do plan on disclosing it earlier than I have in the past. Like, what are you looking yeah. for? Exactly. Kind of mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like I have, like, an ego problem. I'll admit it. <laughs> um, but I, like like I said, like, if I'm talking to you, it's, like, never, like, an in-between. Like, if I'm talking to you, like, I really like you, that's my intentions, and I'm not talking to anyone else. Like, if I'm, like, like when I talk say talking, I'm, like, we talk, we go on dates, you're over whatever like I'm not doing that with anyone else because I feel like there's no way you could really for me I don't see how you could really invest that much energy and time into like three different people and that to be healthy or to have time to do that and if it's like if your intentions are to have a relationship I just personally don't know how you could half-ass that and get to that that's just me I could be wrong but um yeah I don't know I just I don't bring it up I usually give myself three months and I'm like three months we'll have that conversation and that's because I talked to someone for like eight months and then it just ended bad and I was like I should have just brought that up earlier like I shouldn't have let that gone for eight months like people who are talking about oh we've been talking on and off for six years like you look dumb I'm sorry like it's just you cannot have a situation ship for that long um if that's not what you want you know if you want something serious I think you should you know give them a see how you feel, give it a couple months, and then um, ask. So that's just as my a, opinion. As a person who has been in an on and off, who has been in a situation ship for oh, many God. years, I'm not going to say I feel personally attacked by that oh, comment. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think for me at least, I think the unfortunate reality as a Black woman, a lot of our times we find ourselves oftentimes not feeling loved, so we're just willing to concede and take it where we can, so we find ourselves in these in, these situations where it's like, I haven't found anyone who wants to commit to me or love me. And so I feel like I, I'm just going to, it sounds bad, but like, I'm just going to take what I can get. And like, I, I, if I love this person, you know, it's like, they may not love me in the same, you know, vein. And, but like, I don't know. You just kind of, you get so, I don't know. You just, I get that. That's human. Cycle. <laughs> I get that. That's human. But do you ever feel like that's like, you're cheating yourself out of something better? Yeah. Um, yeah, possibly, but also I feel like it's hard when you're, like, in something to see outside of it, where it's, like, I know this person isn't probably treating me the way I want to be treated, but also, like, when those are the, when those are the only relationships you've been in, 
and it, it's the, the likelihood of you finding something different seems really, really far away. And so then it becomes, am I willing to give myself that time and space for who the fuck knows how long that's going to be to then, you know, find someone or am I going to like, you know, take what I can get. And again, that's not like a healthy or, or good situation. But I feel like a lot of times that's a situation that I particularly find a lot of young black women in. Yeah, no, I, I totally can see that. And I can definitely speak on that as someone else who was in a situation ship for years, years. Um, to piggyback what Amari on um, what Amari said, it's completely that. It's it's this thinking of, well, I really love this person and they give me what I want and need sometimes. And maybe if I stay, maybe if I keep on being their friend and their emotional support when they need it and then their physical support when they need it maybe one day they'll give me what I want I'm not justifying that behavior because being on the other side of it now it's like that's dumb um but when you're in it it's really 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 hard to see past it and especially like my personal situation before that I had never had a guy um hit on me. I'd never had a guy tell me that he wanted to be with me, like me enough to be in a relationship. I had never had that. So I did not know it was ever coming for me. So for me, it was kind of this romanticized idea of one day he'll see me and want to be with me completely and totally like that day's coming, but that never comes because you can't actually change someone's behavior in someone's wants yeah you can't make someone like you more and I've definitely had that struggle too where it's like I mean a lot of times like this last year I've definitely (laughs) trying to work on my ego because I'm like oh the ego is bad but it definitely kind of damn I hear the echo again but it boosts my confidence up a little bit because I do have like a little bit of ego when it comes to dating but then it's like I don't know because I was listening to this other podcast and they were talking about he's just not that into you and like one of the hosts said you know if if you're in a situation and you're not in a relationship maybe he's just not that into you and like that's such a hard pill to swallow but like swallowing it is just like easier than like living this false reality because a lot of times like when things will end with guys I'll be like oh they'll come back and like they don't come back <laughs> like mm-hmm. and then it's just like oh maybe they actually like didn't like me that but much I- and I'll go back into that like when we talk more about specifically quarantine dating but that's just something that I've really like honed into because it's like I don't want to be with someone who's just not that into me I want to be with someone who's really that into me and like if you're not that into me I don't want to be with you right but I think it's also funny too not to like uh, but I think it's because you said that they don't come back. But I feel like for some people, those people always come back. So it's harder to also like, I think like swat it away when it keeps on coming back to you in your face. And it's like, why are we in these cycles of like these people leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back? And also, I feel like as a, I feel like the problem too, at least with me in certain situations, um, and I don't know if Jade can speak to it too, but like is I like these people as people too, outside of like our physical Mm. relationship and all these things. It's like, I would just love for you to be in my life. And I think that's, and especially as someone who doesn't let someone into their life very easily, the idea of just cutting something off cold turkey when it's like, I don't just like love you as like a relationship person, but I love you as a human being. I think that makes it a little bit like messy and hard. That is because, I mean, that goes back to like, having a breakup because like a breakup is like like a lot of times people say I'd rather this person die than get broken up with because at least you're you're dead it's like I know you're gone there's no repairing it I know it sounds (laughs) rough but I'm just saying like really it's like someone's gone like there's literally nothing you can do like they are gone they're not on this earth when someone is just you know someone's there and they're just not a part of your life and you have this history and all this stuff with them, it feels like they died, but they're still here. Like, that's another type of pain. And, like, I think it's just a pain that, like, it it really hurts, but but that's what, you know, kind of breaking up and, like, ripping off the Band-Aid. Like, you're never going to heal a wound when you keep, like, opening the wound, close the Band-Aid, I'm going to open it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to close it. It's like that wound is never going to heal. It's just going to keep 
hurting, hurting, hurting until it hurts so much that you don't even oh know what God, to do. Oh my God, stop yelling at me. I'm just, Damn. I'm trying to, I know it's hard. Like I'm just trying to, I always want people, especially women to just like, and especially black women to just like, kind of like always know their worth and like, it's easier that's said why, than done. And that's why I asked that question because it's important to, when you see those issues come up, like rise in the, a rise in the relationship to like address it as soon as it does. So if you say, okay, I won't want you to spend more time with me or I want you to um, talk, be more vocal about how you feel. And if he's, if he or she is not doing what you want, then you know, okay, it's time for me to move on because if they really want to be with you and you tell them like the issues that you have, then they will work to change. And if they don't, then they're not the ones for you. And that's, that's why I actually like, how soon do you address like what you want in the relationship? Because you don't want to waste, you don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste their time. And like, that's such an amazing older. point, Rachel. We're getting I'm glad you brought and, that up. Yeah. And we're like, we're getting older and it's like, you know, we're starting to realize what we want in a relationship. I'm already in a relationship, but like for you guys, like you're starting to learn about yourself and you're starting to learn about like what you want in a relationship. So that's why it's important to, just address what you want in the beginning. Yeah, like it's important to see red flags. And I, I don't, I never subscribe to this, but I know a lot of got, girls will be like, I can fix him or some dumb shit. And I'm like, that never is going to work. You can't fix anyone. If they are like that in the, before you met them in, in the relationship, they're probably going to be like that in the relationship and they're not going to change. Like they can only change if they want to change. And like, chances are they're probably not. So if that's already a deal breaker and you're trying to force this to work, it's just not going to work and you've got to move on. Or you're just going to be miserable and like hate your partner for something that honestly is not really their fault. Like they showed you who they were. That's why I know personally, I have been, like I said before, examining my own dating habits while being in quarantine and kind of like talking to myself about what I do and don't want and trying to manifest exactly what I want in a partner. Um, and I know, like I said before, going into a situation and not completely nailing down what I want and then staying because I don't feel like I'm going to find anything better. Like I'm trying to be rid of that behavior because then I just end up hurt or even doing the change him thing. I'd be the change in queen. I'm no. <laughs> the emotional support queen. And once again, I'm realizing that that is a behavior of mine to think, fix, fix. Maybe if I'm here, maybe if I love enough, maybe if I lend myself in these ways, he'll eventually realize that I'm great and fantastic. That, out the window. Janae is metamorphosing and growing into a new lady. So, all that being said, I really have been taking quarantine to think about my dating habits how I can change them and how to hold myself to a higher standard because I have a lot to offer. I'm a fantastic girl and I'm cute. Yes. As and this yeah. is quarantine. I've been working on my hip dip so I could get a fatter booty. So now, <laughs> that great stuff? So now there's <laughs> nothing stopping you. Nothing stopping me. So why am I holding myself to like such low standards when it comes to dating? Enough, enough. I will say guys, when you keep your standards high, I honestly, like, I'm saying one guy to the next, it always gets better. Like, I'm always just like, okay, raise the standard, hit, raise it. And now I'm at the point where, like, it's pretty high. Like, I think the next one is going to be the one. That's all I'm saying. I'm putting it out in the universe. So I'm saying, I'm getting it. Like, I'm not going backwards. And I feel like that's a lot of things, times what bothers me with, with young people, especially young women, is that they'll constantly get in the same situation with the same type of boy with this and not learn. And I'm just like... I'm not going to judge you for like someone being shitty because that's not your fault, but at least learn from the situation and then grow. And I think a lot of times people find themselves in the same messed up situation. And I'm just like, okay, well, let's take it back a little bit and talk, look at like what you could be doing differently or what red flags you can look out for. And I don't know. I really, I really believe like when you set your standards higher, it just, the universe matches it. I don't know. That's just my personal experience. Yeah. I think COVID has, like, like you guys have been saying, like, like, forced me to take the time to reflect also, because I think I had started a few, like, like, I had started a few dating scenarios before COVID hit. So it's like, how do I want to approach that now in COVID? And also, like, 
past stuff, but I think it's helped me realize that I'm a lot messier than I thought I was. And, <laughs> and also I think it's, I find, I think it's helped me realize that I find myself in current situations because I'm just as afraid of commitment as other people. Uh, and so I find myself in situations where I'm like, well, you know, if I'm going to get hurt, like, I know I'm going to possibly get hurt by the situation, but I'm prepared for it. And also like the idea of fully committing to someone is kind of scary. So I feel like that's why I probably find myself more in like situationships because it's like, everything's kind of loose. Um, but yeah, I think like even going to Janae, I think like quarantine is, has helped me like feel like, no, I actually do know what I want. I'm oftentimes just too afraid to voice it because I think I'm not worthy of it or like I can't get it. And then also it's helped me realize that like I do have certain standards and there's certain things I'm not willing to put up with. Um, and like, I'll probably go back into that later when we talk about like how we've really like broken down our relationship, um, like pasts and stuff. But yeah, COVID has been a good time to reflect. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's like you I think it's just natural because I was listening to this other podcast and they were like yeah my therapist just says everyone's like rethinking their relationships because how could you not rethink your future like this is like our world's been ripped up from under us like we are gonna analyze our future in every aspect um I'm gonna cruise on to our next little statistic which is um in-person dating is a thing of the future um Basically, singles 18 to 34 are more likely to be going on um, in-person dates, while singles 35 to 64 are like, hell nah, I'm waiting over six months to go on a date. Um, How do we feel about that? I, okay, so I'm going to give a little story because I was asking around for this podcast just to see, because I'm personally not on apps or anything so I like to hear people's what they're doing and when quarantine first started I honestly was baffled and I think we talked about this on the podcast about how the use of dating apps went up because I was just like well what are you just gonna have like an internet buddy because like you're not gonna see them for like three months so it just didn't make sense to me uh but I was like okay but I know two friends um started like talking to people regularly um, and they did start like coming over each other's houses. Um, so I guess if a lot of people are, I feel like a lot of people are willing to take that risk, to be honest. And then I think this one of my other friends, she said that um, she started meeting up with this guy um, in the park and stuff. And so in the park, they're meeting here and there. And now they've seen each other like pretty regularly for like a month or two. And now he started to come over. And then she was saying how she doesn't know if she likes this because it's quarantine or she likes it because it'll like stay real after quarantine and I think that's going to be interesting when people like get themselves in these situations but like what is it going to be after quarantine and I feel like a lot of people like at least in the northeast like they're starting to like meet up um like in parks and stuff but then you still gotta wonder if like these this person's meeting up with three other girls you know I don't trust the reopening phases at all. And I think the South, like Texas, Atlanta, the Carolinas are like proof that like, it's not going to last very long. So I have been like very intrigued by the amount of people I've seen meeting in person. Personally, like if we're going to do it, maybe at a park six feet away, but the whole coming into like my personal space inside my home, I'm just not sure about also like, I feel like it gets muddled when you get like, physical because also we don't like we don't know the extent in which these like which COVID can spread um and the safest way of unfortunately is like to abstain from anything if you want to be 100% sure because I'll be damned if I like hooked up with someone and I got COVID from a man I don't really know and then like god forbid I pass away or some shit I'm just an anxious person and paranoid so no I think that's (laughs) valid Amari yeah I don't I don't think people are going to stay away from like meeting in person I think people are going to find ways to meet especially with things opening back up um you see people are like fighting about wearing masks and getting haircuts and shit so I'm pretty sure that people are going to find ways to meet meet each other in person despite of like you know the cases increasing in the U.S. I think that too but I also think a lot of people aren't really thinking kind of how like you said Amari like it's not this is not a regular thing like people should be concerned about because you don't trust this you don't know how much to trust this person like what if he's meeting 
he could be lying to you too like i'm social distancing yeah. and he's meeting three other bitches tomorrow like you know what i'm saying like i don't know i think it's good to kind of have that but I know a lot of people, you know, they just feel a little lonely and they want to go on dates. But then it's just like, you got to be careful. What are your intentions? Do you want a relationship? Mm-hmm. Are you going to really see this person? I think, like, I'm lonely too. And I'm, I miss physical touch, but psh, I like my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really, right. For me, it all comes down to who you're around. So right now I'm in upstate New York living with my older parents who are more likely to get hurt from COVID. I'm not seeing nobody. That's not happening. And when I do see my friends, it's like, you know, we're not going to be tongue kissing. Yeah. Um, but I know that when I go back to New York City, which is a more dense population, I'm living with someone who has a boyfriend and their boyfriend has roommates. I can't tell her not to go see her boyfriend. Like, I just can't do that. So my thing is, If you start a relationship with someone or if you start seeing someone, just be smart, just ask questions and just be honest. Because at the end of the day, I'm not about to limit myself when the world could be trash tomorrow. But also, if the person I would like to see lives with older people, then we'll revisit this another day. But if we're all living with young people, roommates are going to do what they do anyway. It's like... Yes, but I do want to address the fact that this week the average age of getting COVID was 35 Mm. so I just want to address that a lot of people a lot of young people are doing kind of reckless stuff thinking I'm immune and shit because the CDC was like oh the average age is 65 but y'all did all the reopening in three months we have the average age cut in half essentially so it's only going to get lower and lower so I just think people have to be a little cautious that we don't know everything about this disease and even from the stats the average age is hitting like that 25 to 35 age so i think people need to stop thinking they're immune and really like yeah. take this seriously also and like we, oh sorry go ahead Amari. no go ahead Amari. I, I was just gonna say and also uh it, it, it disproportionately impacts people with underlying or like with you know autoimmune conditions but also like underlying diseases and the key word there's like underlying so you might think you're healthy but it's an underlying disease so you might not know about it like I have uh, autoimmune disease in my family and like my dad's diabetic um, my mom has issues and I'm just like I could potentially have those issues and not actually be aware of it because it, those to find out those required specific tests that I haven't had um, so I think that's like my kind of like paranoia out there it's just like yeah, I'm young. Hopefully I have the like a strong enough immune system to survive it. But I'm also like not 100% sure when I like see stories of 23 year olds dying of like COVID and heart attacks and stuff. Yeah. And kid failure. Um, that's scary. But just be patient. You know, like if it's if it's real, it you'll survive. You'll survive COVID. You know, just wait until everything is just back to normal. We have a vaccine. Um, we have Skype and FaceTime. that's true I think like just be patient be honest be open because like I said before if you are living in a place where you have roommates and your roommates have a significant other and your their significant other have roommates it's like like you you can sit here all day today and tomorrow and be like okay be socially distant be smart be aware but it's like this shit is hard 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 to pin down if you're living in a heavily dense populated area. So like, be smart, be honest with people, don't be a dick and be going on dates with three different people at once. And when you're going on dates with people, wear a mask, stay distant, don't hop on someone the first chance you get, just be smart. Facts. Period, pool. That's <laughs> <laughs> I muted myself. Huh? Okay, what's the next stat? Okay, so um, authenticity is the thing singles want to see continue most post-COVID. And I can so speak to that, especially with what Rachel just said, um, with being patient. And just FaceTime, be open to talking and talking about what you're going through. Like, It's so, I I got so frustrated because like I went on the apps before I deleted some of them. Um, And I was, had had these thoughts of it's COVID, maybe this is pointless. 
So I was talking to this one guy. We matched, and he messaged me, like, straight away. And he was giving, like, one-word answers, not asking any questions. I was like, this is the most pointless conversation in the world. And I'm, I, it, just, it just really, really upset me because, like, even during this time, you can't be authentic. You're not offering me anything. You're not giving me anything. And that was like, that's just like a big thing right now that I'm struggling with in general and going on these apps. It's like, if you're not going to be 100, if you're not going to give me a little bit more, knowing that I probably won't be able to see you as quickly as I would be if COVID wasn't happening, it's just like, what's the point? Yeah, I think that all the time, I'm just like, I wish people would kind of take things a little more serious but I don't know I I get it because we all have different intentions we all have different types you know so it's a little hard when you have all that into one app because maybe he will match with someone who's just like oh I love this one word answer (laughs) like I don't know (laughs) but um I get that frustration but I I would like to see everyone be a little more authentic after this because it's like we all experience this kind of together and so I'd hope after this people could at least be a little more like authentic at the beginning of COVID, I was kind of, ex- not excited, but I was interested in how it would change the dating landscape. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this will now make, one thing I struggle with um, in dating is when deciding to become physical with that person. And I feel a lot of pressure around that sometimes. Um, and so I was like, oh, well, maybe this, because we can't actually be in person, this will give us that space to kind of concentrate on, like, who we are as human beings and, like, have these discussions and to see if, like, the conversation can flow. Um, so, like, that's one aspect I liked about it. And I thought, like, maybe this would force people, you know, like today was like, to be more authentic and, like, kind of get into the root of, like, who you are as a person. Uh, but I also haven't, like, actively been trying to, you know, talk to too many people who I haven't already known or like linked up with. Um, so I don't know if it's different for other people out there. Okay, we can cruise on to the next one. Um, surveys are showing that video dating is not making up for in-person connection, which I feel like is- That was shocking to be it, honest. Really? Yeah. I video dating think- is not- making up for in-person connection I don't I don't and I would have I would have never expected video uh connecting through video to make up for in-person because like in-person is there's just so much that you can get from an in-person interaction with people based off of like body language how they're interacting with other people around them that like video doesn't give you insight into mm-hmm. okay that's true I'll break down the stats a little bit more on this one um 58.8 percent of respondents are no more willing to try video dating now than they were pre-COVID, um, though of respondents, females are more likely than males to try video dating. Hmm. Shocking. Um, respondents aged 18 to 34 are nearly 12 percent more willing to try video dating than respondents aged 35 to 60, which I think that is. Um, once again, what we said earlier in the show, not saying all men are lazy, but the stat speaks for itself, don't it? Um, I really feel like you do not have to say all, I feel like it's kind of like how we don't have to say, like we get annoyed when white people are like, not all white people. Like, I just feel like it's the same thing. Like I shouldn't have to say not all white people. Like we know. You're right. The men who are not problems won't. Be they will your... feel a certain way about yeah. the or, yeah. or what's being said. Yeah. But I do you think in, who you are. Right. But I do think in not in general, but you know, I think you have a lot more women who tend to be willing to bend or make ex- or not not make exceptions, but like adapt to a certain situation to make it work. Um, and I think that shows in the stat why more women are willing to video chat than mm. than some men. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that that is something that women are taught when they are younger. I think women are taught that you need to be more amenable and soft and and ready to bend. And, and, you know, I think that's what we're taught growing up. And I think that we follow that through into adulthood. And that's why in a lot of cases with dating, women are willing to bend their morals to find the guy. Um, I mean, shit, we see that in Disney movies. Ariel, like- Gave up her freaking voice. Give up her voice mm-hmm. and her cool ass fishtail. Oh, man. Some, you know, I mean, we're taught that. We're taught. Who was ready to drop her for another woman? Who was ready to drop her? 
And do you guys do you guys know the original story of A Little Mermaid? Isn't like, it really dark? In the original I... story, she commits suicide. Wait, like really? she she jumps yeah. off the boat without her like fishtail and commits suicide. Yeah, it's wow. like a really dark story. Actually, Disney kind of like twisted it. To be honest. Oh, shoot. Why does wow. Disney do that? Disney They're, is sad. Like, Every wait, story is sad. Gretel, um, a lot of them are like dark. Yeah. The original stories are like dark, dark. They should stay dark. <laughs> That's <laughs> the reality, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then they can't make money because he wants to go watch a story about a mermaid committing suicide. Over Imagine a like putting that on Nickelodeon, the ads. <laughs> <laughs> See this with your two year olds. <laughs> Our next stat is that survey reveals nearly 60% of respondents are more open to long distance dating during COVID. That's not surprising. That's, a, that's in, I don't know. Long distance is a lot. I don't know. I think I'd be so good at long distance. Oh, I'm, I'm a great long distance. <laughs> Listen, honey. I couldn't do it. I don't want to, but I feel like I'm good at it. I could do it. I don't want to, but if I found the right person, I could definitely do it. If I, if I found the right person, I think I would be chill with so much. Like, long distance, if we're both committed to each other, I don't get, I don't get the issue. Right. I feel like work. my issue is it's either I'm not or they're not. It's never like we're both. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, yeah, we're not damn. on the same page. We were. Yeah. I'd be in a relationship right now, <laughs> wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Dad asked me to. <laughs> um, but then it gets complicated because someone will have to decide to move or... You know, like, we can find a city that we both like and move there together, or it doesn't always work that way. Or I can try to work remote and then meet you. You can try to work. We can we can work it out. We can go through all the possible scenarios and find one that best suits us. The only reason I would say open to it because it's like they were here before and I know what it's like before, and then they move, so it's like fine, I'll make it work. But you know, so you wouldn't start out long distance. I don't think so. I think that's a little tricky. Yeah, starting out. Mm-hmm. I would do a long distance situation ship. Like I don't have to see you every three months. Sure, I can do that. If you, if you fly me out. Yeah, you fly me out. Yeah, you would have to fly me out. Come on now, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going into my savings for this. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's raise that standard, guys. But Make I sure they fly you out. But if you're in a long distance distance relationship, I definitely think it would make sense to go like half Z's on a plane ticket for each one because it's like you're both trying to get something out of that. See, I thought that and then I met my one of my best friends, her boyfriend moved to LA and that boy be playing for her flights to come out there. Oh, he was well, if you want to do full, that's depends. okay. But like half that we can meet each other halfway too. We can, but let's raise that standard. <laughs> Yeah, I can't even get a man to commit to me. Full it's okay. We're raising, we're raising all of our standards. We're raising it. I, you know what? I think life is too long to be with someone you are like so so about. You know, like if I'm gonna be here on this earth and I have to spend my time, I want to spend my time with someone. But does that let's mean raise have, that standard. Does that mean I have to pay for his ticket too when he comes out to visit me? No, girl. I want you to make a lot of money. Like I'm not saying that's a requirement, <laughs> but I'm just saying if I had that option, let's go all in. I'll, yeah. let, let's go big or go home. Literally, I'm gonna go home to heaven if I'm not gonna get this. Oh. Like, <laughs> so you want a ball player or a rapper? Like, she wants no, 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 no. I don't want that. So. I'm just saying it just made a lot of my friends. Cause two of my friends, no, three of my friends, like they have boyfriends that literally just like take them on vacation, pay for their bills, all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's shoot for that. Okay. I've never questions, had that. Questions, questions, questions. Who are these men and who are these women? I don't know. They're not black. Okay, there we go. They're not, they're not. They're black black women. They're black women. They're black women? Yes, they're black women. And they have dudes paying for their flights and they're paying their rent. Yes, they do. Are there significant others in tech? Uh, Two of them are tech, one's medical. Okay, see, but like my, like, if you got it like that, we can do Mm -hmm. it. But like. I'm I'm not gonna be like we're both out here hustling and on top of us both hustling. You need to also pay for my. Ticket. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if if I if I had it my way, <laughs> if I had it my way, I want it all. But if I I'm not gonna I'm not one of those people that are like bougie. It's like you have to make 100k and you have to pay for my rent and you have to. I don't need all that. But I'm just saying if we're gonna go big, let's go big. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
in the Actually, Disney movie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, it's real, Rachel. It's real. I'll be economical. Don't tell. I'll be economical. I know. I'm too. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm very, I don't know. I'm, I'm very like everything should be equal in a relationship. I, unless, unless. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen to me. Listen to me. Unless my man really, really has it, like he has it, then I don't. Don't you want your man to have it? Don't yeah. you want him to have it? I, I, I would want that, but I feel like I'd be dreaming, and that's why I'm like, maybe I. Need I don't to think you're. I think you need to change your mind instead of you think it's a dream. But, but at the same why time, is it a dream? It but happens. Also, but why does he also? But like, I think the thing too is like, we can, he can have it in different ways. Like he doesn't have to be balling like that, but he can have it in the way he takes care of me as a person. For sure, like for he's sure. Doing, like he's doing X, Y, and Z. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like if you have it like that and you want to do that. I'm not going to stop you, but I'm also like, I think, but this is all like just dream world, right? Like It's a not a dream. Scenario. I like don't think it's a dream. Scenario. I think, I'm not saying I need all that. Like what my qualities in a guy, if you look at my list, it's never about money or like you have to be a model or stuff like that. It is about like who you are and that's a fit for me. Like, but if I had to, you know, pick a dream guy or whatever I would want you to fly me out and stuff and pay for that because you know, look you could be poor alone I could be poor alone listen I don't have debt I don't have anything so like if I'm coming to the table I don't have any debt you're not I'm not one of those people where I have credit card debt a bunch of student loans whatever so yeah I'm gonna need something in return like I can I don't want to be paying for me to fly out to see you just hypothetically I can here and there but just like there also needs to be like I know I bring a lot to the table like, if we want to talk about money, looks, fun-wise, ambition, like, yeah, I'm going to, like, raise my standards higher. Like, that's just how I think about it. And then I see my friends personally where their boyfriends do literally pay for them to go on vacation. They don't pay a cent. Like, and I'm just like, wow, that is nice that someone would take care of you like that. Like, I would like to feel that way. I would like that, but I don't expect it. That's where I sit. I would like that, but I do not expect it. I guess, and I guess, and two is like, if I need to make sure that you doing this because you want to do this, and I don't want a man to ever feel like he has ownership over me because he paid for X, Y, and Z. Like I can pay for X, Y, and Z myself. It's one thing. Like I can pay for it. You can do it for me if you want, but I don't want like someone to feel like. I don't want it to come back and bite me in the ass and been like, well, I've been supplying your lifestyle for X, Y, and Z. I get that too. And my friends who their boyfriends are doing this, it's like, they're not, they're out here making six figures too. Like, it's just like, they're not bums. Like they make a six figure income. So they, you know, if, even if they wanted to be like, oh, I don't want to, like they're completely fine on their own. Like they're balling out too. So I just feel like, you know, they know their worth and like, okay, I make ticket figures. I want you to make ticket figures too. Like, I just feel like, I don't know. I'm just see their, that lifestyle and I'm just like, okay, I like it. So, so with me and my boyfriend, we both work, we have great jobs. Um, there are certain things that we both pay together and some things that he pays. You know what I mean? It just it just depends on like balance and your relationship and what you guys do together. Um, like Janae said, it's, um, what did Janae, what did you say, Janae? I forgot. Um, <laughs> I said I would like it but I don't expect it right like you it it does it sounds great but in reality if you're dating if you're dating someone who you know um doesn't make six figures but you know works and will put the time and energy to like make the relationship work and there's things that if you financially that you guys discuss and you guys work with together like if that's what you want in your relationship then that's what you want and that's what you will work towards to to make it work you know what I mean? yeah, yeah no if he was like okay, a teacher it's okay if you yeah like it, it just it just depends on their occupation one and if you would if, if you don't want someone who's like who has who works um who has a teacher's salary if you want someone who's six figures then you know you you'll have to go out and pursue that person yeah for me it's not about and I don't want to come off as like a bougie whatever because I'm not but it's like if it's more about like what you like to do. And like, I don't want to come home to someone who you actually, so you can make six figure in like finance or whatever. I don't want you coming home complaining to me about your finance job because I, I, I'm really not about that. Like I take my job seriously and I really do pursue like 
my full-time job is what I love to do and like outside what I love to do. So it's not going to be a match. Even if you do make 6k and you're coming to me complaining about you hate your life and you hate your job. Like, so I'd much rather you be a teacher and be like, I love kids. I love education. I'm going to pursue that passion. And yes, I'm not making six figures, but I am a good like husband. Yeah. Or whatever. It's not all about, it's not all about their, their occupation and what they make. Yes. That is helpful, but you know, you can have someone who makes six figures and is an asshole and doesn't treat you. For sure. Right. Yeah. I'm not, I, yeah, I definitely am not condoning that, but I'm just like, okay, I'll raise my standards all around. I'll manifest that. Okay. The last little bullet point we have, um, is that values matter. Um, you're being judged based on your social distance practices and choices with dating. And I, I can totally, totally speak to that. I was, um, talking to a guy when things were like bad in New York state, like the height of it all. And he lived further downstate, but not in like New York city. And he was like occasionally hanging out with friends and stuff. And I was kind of like, Ooh, he, he risque. He really, he really risking it all. And it was like, yeah, I'm just hanging out with a few friends, but it, it definitely felt like when things were, at the peak, it was like even the thought of hanging out with a few friends, because like I said before, you hang out with two friends. Are they hanging out with other people? Or is it like they ain't hanging out with nobody? Like, how how do you know that? Mm -hmm. So that was definitely like, it was, it was, maybe it wasn't a firm, like judge horrible. It was like a, Uh, but it's unattractive though, if you're not going to take care of your health and your body. Yeah. Cause that's what it comes down to. Like you're, and it's also like, maybe you're just a little selfish too. Like that, it could be, it can it just be about social distancing, but it's like, maybe this person is like a little selfish or like maybe this person doesn't really give a shit about like their health or like even this country, you know? Yeah. That's kind of how I would see that. Yeah. I think it's definitely telling. And then, but like, it's hard too. Cause at the same time, it's also like, I think everyone has a threshold for certain things and it's like, you know, I feel like being completely isolated from people is like a lot, especially when you're, especially if you're a person who's used to like physically being around with people. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to judge some of your choices, but at the same time, it's kind of like, and out, like, if you're going to go around people, just be like smart, like make sure you're actively socially distancing yourself and like wearing a mask. Um, I won't be judgy off of that. If, like you're with a group of three people and you're, you know, adhering to certain rules. But it is hard because I'm just like, it's hard. it's hard. How like how long you like how long can you not be like physically near people, especially if you're socially just dist- especially if you're like you're quarantining or socially distancing yourself like by yourself, like people who live alone and like aren't in relationships and like aren't near family. Like that's true, Mari. That's a lot. Personally, it's like things just aren't. This entire situation is not black and white. I don't think it's easy to be like oh, well, you're an asshole for seeing people. I don't think it's easy to be like, how could you not hang out with people? You're so alone. Ah. I think it's like, it's it's a mixture. It's a 50-50 where it's like, ah, you're hanging out with people. Are you putting other people at risk? But at the same time, I get it in such a hard time, like needing emotional support and needing to see people. Like I it's hard. It's hard. It's just not black and white. It's I not. don't really feel like the people who are going out into public spaces and not wearing masks and socially distancing, like going to like grocery stores, all these, yeah. y'all are actually assholes. Yeah, but right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I feel like a grocery store and you're like, I'm not going to wear masks. We all see those middle-aged white men who be and women. We see you, Karen. It's, it's always middle-aged white people. That's, that's what I've seen in my experience. It's always middle-aged white people that out here not wearing masks and they look at you dead in your eyes waiting for you to say something because they want to start a fight. Oh, I, see, okay. I haven't gotten to that point yet because yeah, I'm not doing all like that. I've, I've seen, I've seen videos of it happening, happening in Jersey too. So I'm in, I'm, oh God. Yeah. I mean, granted, I like went to the grocery store with my mom one day and there was someone just passing by us without a mask. And I was like, don't move, don't move. Because these people mm-hmm. just don't care. Yikes. Yeah. Sorry, I feel um, like I cut you off, Rachel. No, no, no. I was agreeing with uh, what you were saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So do we want to go into, like, personal, a, a more personal dive about COVID? 
Shaw. Sure. I'm going to go later. Someone else go first. Um, I'll start yeah. since, like, um, Rachel yeah, is so in a relationship. Since I'm in a relationship, so I'll start and then y'all end with what you guys have to say. Um, I've learned a lot about like myself and my partner while being quarantined. Uh, I've learned how to appreciate being alone by spending time with myself and also with my boyfriend. Um, one thing that was really big for us was communicating about our likes and dislikes. Uh, I wasn't worried about being quarantined with him in the beginning. I was actually like looking forward to it, but I was concerned about being bored. That was my biggest concern, but like, you know, we got through it. We found like activities and things that we can do together um, to just help us get through this time. Um, yes, we argued a lot and that's bound to happen, especially when you're in the house with them like 24 seven, like that is bound to happen. But um, it's also healthy to argue, you know, especially when it's not healthy when you guys are both like shouting at each other, not listening. Um, I also learned that you have to uh, be patient and kind and learn to um, listen and not just not listen to reply, but listen to understand what that other person is saying. And so for me, uh, what was key was working on myself and like my relationship every day. I just started going back to therapy, um, like working out, you know, taking time for myself and doing things that um, I know what will make me happy because my happiness relies on me. I can't rely on anyone else to make me happy. Um, yes, you know, being in a relationship with someone else, like together, you guys should be happy together, but you're going to get disappointed because you expect things from your partner that you, you're not um, getting. And then you lash out on them instead of realizing that it's little things I need to work on myself because I feel some type of way about whatever it is that you're feeling. So um, overall, so it's a it's a journey, and um, I'm happy with where I am today, and and like everything that I've gone through. Um, I've seen a change in myself. I've seen a change in like my relationship, and I'm excited, and I look forward to the future. That was such a good start. No, yes. It's just going to get messier and messier. It's probably going to get... <laughs> guys, that was the best story you're going to hear this whole episode. <laughs> no, Listen, there up. is hope in the world. I'm glad you said that because I feel like a lot of times a lot of like these articles and stuff focus on like pe- the bad things, but it's like there could be a lot of good things. Yeah. Especially yes. right now. Um, I'll go next. Um, So in in the beginning of quarantine, or actually before quarantine, um, I was on Hinge using that. It was cool. Um, And and right before quarantine, like in February, I started talking to this guy that like, we were really interested in each other. We got along and stuff. Um, And then as quarantine happened, um, we were still actively talking to each other then we and we were even talking about maybe trying to figure out how to see each other um but that kind of waned as the number of cases spiked in New York um and then honestly things kind of uh faded out between us we like talked every now and again but things just kind of fell through um and 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 just a general note about myself and, and reevaluating what I want in a person um, during quarantine, that kind of led me to, to sit down and think about what I want um, and kind of the knowledge that during this entire thing, um, I'm willing to get to know someone, I'm willing to go on FaceTime, I'm, I'm willing to talk and text with someone and, and, you know, try to build a relationship. But the the big thing for me is like, I'm not willing to do this alone. And I think in the past, I would have given a lot of space for that. But now I'm just kind of like, well, I'll be here. But you're gonna have to do the work of hitting me up and trying to pursue this, because I'm not about to be in your face hitting you up. Like, that's not happening. I'll put myself out there. I'll let you know I'm here. But other than that, like, if it dies, then it dies. And that's it. I'm not 
chasing it. I'm not resurrecting it. I'm not giving hell of time to it. Um, I did end up deleting Hinge and stuff pretty early on because I was just like, well, I like this guy. I'm talking to him. I don't feel the need to push conversation with other people when half these people I'm talking to aren't even giving any energy or effort toward it. So I did delete Hinge. Um, but recently I downloaded uh, the app for, for Black people while dating. Um, ELK? Yes. So far it's trash, but that could just be <laughs> the area I'm in. So once I move back to Brooklyn in like a week, we'll see. What type of people are on it? Can you give us a little? Because um, I mostly heard it's trash. So I've, I'm like, Well, no. it's, it's Syracuse. So yeah. like Renee said, kind of. It's but what type of black people are in Syracuse? To be completely honest with you, a lot of the, the black men are in Syracuse already have children. Um, they are, you know, the man that I'm looking for is fully educated, has a 401k, is constantly interested in bettering himself, doesn't have kids yet. And I personally, I find that a lot of the black men in this area that have that left Syracuse. Um, And the ones that have stayed don't necessarily have what I'm looking for, aren't to be harsh on my level. Mm -hmm. Um, So scrolling through the apps, I'm seeing a lot of like, I do have kids and I take care of them. And it's like, (laughs) good for you. I'm happy you take care of your kids, but I'm 26. I'm sorry. That's literally hilarious. You know, I mean, it's I, like the bare minimum, like, yeah, you should take care of your kids. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it's like I, I'm scrolling through it on Syracuse and I'm just like. OK, so maybe in Brooklyn, it'll be a little better. And maybe in Brooklyn, it'll be a little better. Fingers crossed. Update if, us. Yeah, I'll, I'll update the podcast. I'll let everyone know. Um, but yeah, that's me right now. Um, but I'm just going through what I want and trying to stay as, as honest as I possibly can with my standards and, and what I want. That's good. I love it. Um, are you next? Yeah, I'll go. Um, I just want to start off. I hope you all remember back when we did our New Year's resolutions post or episode, I said, I would like to think about men less. And I just think the world is weird because I am currently thinking about men a lot less due to COVID and the, the current position we are in uh, with this racial like uh, reckoning that America is going through right now. Um, but before COVID, I did end up going on a date with someone who I was pretty excited about. And that was the last in-person date I had and COVID just ruined everything. Um, and our communication has been kind of like in and out and, you know, a few other people who I have spoken with and talked to in the past have kind of like re-entered and I've been having conversations, but it's all kind of like, I feel less committed and like serious about everything, particularly relationship wise, because it's just like my mind it is kind of like just all over the place. Um, and I find myself more so focusing on me, um, my work. Uh, what I want in the future and kind of like zooming in on those things. Um, But it also has kind of like made me, I think, rethink about like relationship wise, what I want from a person, what values I want them to have and like what things I'm not willing to put up with. So like all around, if you're not, you know, as as pro black as I am, as if you're not thinking about the community and how, you know, we need to like, make sure black people are always in the conversation um if you're kind of not on the same page as that then I don't I don't want it like I don't want to have to be in a relationship where I I have to explain why why the sexism of J. Cole's lyrics is problematic you know I don't want to have to discuss why people are out there you know protesting and like looting and um and you know vandalism may be a part of it like I don't want to have to explain the roots of that just like different things um I'm just like tired I'm like tired overall so my threshold for the bullshit that men like to bring into my space is very low right now and I think that's a good place to be in yeah you should put those walls up I totally get that on the um it is exhausting you do not want to you do not want to explain these things like and I was a little patient with my ex-boyfriend just because he wasn't from this country and 
he was not black I didn't have to like explain a lot because I would not have done that but sometimes I'm like okay yeah I don't want to I don't have to do that like it's tiring like I don't want to have to like explain to you why these things are happening like I'm not a teacher especially I think also to right you're not a teacher you weren't put on this earth to like you know specifically educate these people even though you can do it in the process but also like I don't want that to be in like my relationship space where I feel like I'm always having to like reaffirm and explain my existence particularly as like a dark-skinned black woman like if I have to explain like any part of that existence to you then it's kind of like we can't and you definitely shouldn't have to do that if like it is a black man too and that's frustrating because I'm like I shouldn't have to tell you why your people are acting this way like we are both black like I don't understand how you don't get that or like how you can be so gung-ho about black lives matter but when it comes to like trans people or or women you you just don't get you don't see it right I'm not I'm not here to like educate like I like I'm done with the misogyny the misogyny the transphobic homophobic uh like attitudes like I can't deal with it so absolutely not yeah. Right, and to some people, like they're like, "Oh, you're too harsh. Like you're anti men." Hell like, people, no. People will literally do that, and it's just like, no, I'm just like, that's just like not acceptable. Like that I'm is not, so dumb for, to I tell someone that, that because you don't want someone who's homophobic or sexist. You're asking for too much. What? That's insane. That's that's a no. And also, like, if we really want to think about it, like hypothetically, like say you're a little older and you want kids, you also have to think about if I have a child and this child is gay or trans. Think about the trauma that that child's going to have knowing that his mom knew his daddy was transphobic, homophobic, and now, like, you're just ruining, like, another child's life. Like, it's just a lot of things that people don't think about, and I'm just like, you guys are so okay with dating homophobic men and stuff, and God forbid you have a kid that's homophobic, like, um, gay. Like, God forbid, like, you know what? It's like, I'm not, and if it comes down to it, obviously I'm going to attack my child over, you know, this man. So it's like, okay, so now our relationship's done. He doesn't have a dad. You know, it's just a lot of things that people need to think about too. Right. So like, I don't like, you know, as an ally to the community, as someone who, you know, has friends who identify, like, I want, and like you said, like, I'm thinking towards the future. I'm okay with it. I embrace it. I love that. I think it's beautiful. And I think the world would be very dull if it's trans. Um, and queer people were not in the conversation we're not here so like if that's not like if you don't have that same mindset like again like we don't need to talk like we don't need to have a conversation and whoever said that's too much it's like that's exactly why we are where we are in the world and then people are like I wonder why cops kill black people it's like because you guys date and fornicate with these people that are racist fornicate again but you like date people that are racist and you're like well I don't understand what's wrong with the world it's like Uh, maybe we should stop engaging with those type of people like it's the same thing y'all are preaching right now (laughs) i'm mad that someone told you that's too much i'm sorry that really pissed me off well i'm just saying like i'm saying in general like i'll be having conversations with people and i feel like a lot of the times it's put on like as a woman i might like i'm not being you know like as understanding or like i'm not making you know like i'm being too like quick to like push people to the side and like maybe I should take more time to like educate them on some things like maybe I might be the bridge to them than like thinking differently and I understand that like if there is no one there to educate people like how can we expect people to you know move forward but at the same time that is a lot to put on one person and I don't as like a 25 year old I don't want to have to deal with someone who's my age and doesn't like who hasn't already you know done the work to educate themselves I'm sorry real quick real quick Putting that responsibility on Black women's shoulders is something that this country has done for too, 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 too long. And I think that is the problem that we all had with J. Cole's lyrics. You're putting responsibility on Black women to constantly educate and nurture people. And then we absorb these roles and don't give ourselves enough love and don't you know, give ourselves higher standards because we think that it's just our job to take care of people. It's not our job to educate you on how to be a better and more accepting person. It's not a black woman's job. I'm rebuking that. Rebuked. Done. Rebuke? Where is the holy water? (laughs) It's Sunday, (laughs) y'all. You would just now be getting out of church. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, no, I just, I, I personally 
I hate that because I think a lot of times people will like to tell women and black women like your standards are too high like whatever and it's like if we want to think about it like what I want is what I can offer to the table I'm not asking for anything crazy like me asking for what I want is literally what I can bring and more so it's like I think it's only fair you can ask what you can bring like so a lot of ugly dudes are out here like I want a model you can't bring that you can't provide that so you cannot ask for that or you want someone to I don't know like take care of you hand and foot but you can't even know how to cook an egg then you cannot ask for that so I just think it's like when people talk about standards it's like just because you can't reach them doesn't mean someone else can can't so I think a lot of times guys will be like you're standard too I just like just because you're not in the playing field like just get out of here just get out and you know what side note real quick real quick when I ask for a guy who is above six foot I am not a girl who's like five two trying to date because I'm so I'm so I'm so absolutely sick of people when they ask about my standards and people will specifically specifically be like so would you date a guy shorter than you you shouldn't have to I shouldn't have to I know statistics wise it's going to be harder for me and I am becoming more willing to date someone shorter because I know just numbers just just a numbers game it's harder but I hate when people come up to me, you should date someone shorter. You should think about that, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I am not a girl who's 5'2 looking to date a guy who's 6'2. No, I am six foot, damn it. Six foot, six foot. I'm not being ridiculous in my standards. I have had people tell me that my standards are too high because I would prefer to date a guy who's six foot or above. What? Also, it, takes also, have, it, takes, it takes a certain type of man to also be willing to date a woman taller than him. Because let's not act like men don't have some complex about that. That's so true. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Because I'm not the only one here. I'm not the only one here. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. We should do an episode about standards. Uh, (laughs) Oh, I guess it's my turn. I'll try to do this quick. So I don't know. It's funny how you guys were saying how quarantine has made you reassess relationships and stuff like that and what you want and all this stuff. So I personally feel like I... I was in that phase before COVID, like a little bit before COVID. So it's been a little weird for me. So I'll just give like a kind of background story without giving my business because I don't want y'all really knowing that much, to be honest. But I guess you have to know. Um, (laughs) So I'll just say like, okay, this time last year, I was talking to someone and it ended bad. Like it really hit. it, It was like a huge hit to my emotional and like mental health. And it reassessed the way I was thinking about you know, relationships, and it was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie, um, and then, you know, I was kind of just, like, in this phase where I'm just, like, okay, whatever, I guess I'll just, you know, be single for X amount of time, and then I met someone in the fall, and it was really, really good, like, really, really good, like, really great connection, he, like, reminded me of my ex, but, like, all the good things and more, so I was really excited, and then he moved, (laughs) and that sucked um but you know we've talked here and there I saw him like a little bit before COVID um like in February and then um I saw him not too long ago and that's the first time in like four months four months so it was pretty long and before that I was pretty content with like being at my parents house and like content with um my love life because I was just like okay you know you know I can't control anything it's COVID um I'm pretty calm at my parents house like I feel pretty good like whatever and then I guess just like seeing him um I only saw him for like a couple days and after that and like being in my apartment and it just kind of like made me realize like wow COVID is like really happening like I it was like I was back in my apartment it just hurt because it felt like I, I, this is like used to be my life and like it's not my life here like it, it it just really I didn't really like realize until I was back into like the space where I would have been at and it really like took a hit to my mental health and then like him leaving I was just like wow that was like such an extreme dopamine rush to like an extreme low because it's like I hadn't had anything for like since March and then it's like extreme high then they leave and then it's like okay, now I feel super lonely right now. I feel super depressed. Um, I don't know the next time I'll see him. Um, that just made me really, really sad. And then um, 
I also, like I said, like before, like meeting him, it just kind of switched my mind where I was like, okay, I know exactly what I want. Like I already knew what I, I wanted. I know exactly what I want. I've, I've been in a good amount of situations. I'm like pretty, pretty sure that like I'm getting there. Like I'm, I feel it in my heart that I'm getting close. Like I'm getting close to meeting the person. I just feel it. It's in my heart. And so now in this situation, it just kind of makes me really sad because I think like uh, this specific person being away and um, like his kind of like where he is right now in his career and stuff I I also don't think he would like even want a serious relationship long distance so I kind of had to just like accept that you know I'm really grateful for when we do get to see each other and we talk here and there and x amount of months and I'm completely okay with that but I do have to just accept the fact that you know maybe they're not in the right space to have long distance relationship clearly that's not you know the space and I just have to accept that and be okay with that um and then it does make me sad on the other end because it's like okay I've accepted that so I obviously want you know to meet new people and explore someone who can offer that and that makes me sad because I'm like well when would I meet someone and ideally it would probably be like another year and so thinking of it like that makes me a little sad because it's like wow I'm not even gonna get the opportunity to meet someone and I feel like I'm really you know ready and like more than the average person my age and then it just makes me sad because I'm just like I'm not going to go on apps because I'm not gonna I, I just feel like it's not safe right now for me I'm not, it's not safe to be meeting people I just don't know how people are going to take it seriously if I do meet you and like a year in and I it's great and then we get into the real world and then I found out you're actually like really shitty to waiters or something or like you're really shitty when hanging out with your friends and I think that's another thing that scares me because I'm just like well, we're not, this isn't real life. Like right now isn't real life. So we can have this fairy tale with this person and then we get into the real world and it actually like is not what we thought at all. So that's just kind of my mindset because I'm just like, I feel like I was before COVID, I was like the last couple of years have been a little rough and like a lot of aspects with my job and like dating and, and mentally and stuff. And so when I hit like 25, I really felt like an internal shift of like, okay, I'm ready. Like, I feel like I went through the growing years. I feel like, you know, now I'm on my second job. I know what it's like to be laid off. I know what it's like to, like, you know, break up the love of your life. I know what it's like to do all these things. And I feel like I'm ready. And then COVID happened and just feels like, okay, pause, like, for like a year, which really sucks. So that's just how I've been feeling. I think that's why personally, like, I want to give people grace in a sense when it comes to just dating in general during this time, because I, it's hard right now. It's hard to just put your life on pause. It's hard to give someone else emotional energy and emotional support when you have to put your life on pause. Um, It's hard to say, well, I'm not going to hang out with anyone and completely isolate myself when we are social humans are social so I think it's just so important to like give ourselves patience and give ourselves grace and like take opportunities as they come but just be smart and as cautious as you possibly can but like don't beat yourself up about stuff like at all yeah I feel like it's for me it's like being kind of impatient but like I did work on being patient. So I kind of felt like it was like, okay, I worked on being patient. It's not like I, you know, I've had things here and there, but like technically my last year, like a formal relationship was July 4th. It'll be three years ago, like that it ended. So it's like, okay, I feel like I did put in the internal work. I feel like I put in the experience I put in that and I feel internally it's ready. And then it just makes me so sad because I'm just like, wow, COVID is really about to be here for, like, average another year, like, and then I'll be hitting four years, and then it's just, like, I'm ready to, like, move on, like, I don't really need the whole, like, internal analyzing and stuff, and so it's just, like, wow, COVID's really, like, preventing any type of, like, growth in that area. I give you so much, dude, because I, I even had the thought of, okay, I feel like I'm changing, I feel like I'm I've had this, this big movement, this big inner shift. And now I'm ready to like give that to the world, but it's like, huh, there's no world to give it to. And then on top of that, just the idea of dating right now, it's like, okay, having 
someone is always great, especially when you're going through something that's more emotionally stressful. But what if I do all of this work to meet someone and then it's like, like you said, they're crappy to waiters or they're like actually a psychopath or they chew too loudly. And it's like, I didn't know that because we were just hanging out on Skype and on the phone. It's like, should I even try? But at the same time, I've done all this great inner work and I'm ready to have someone. I'm ready to date. I'm ready to find someone. Like I'm finally ready to do the work, but now my life is on pause. Yeah. And I, and I guess we're taking a more of like a negative outlook on it because, you know, I was just so hesitant because I'm just like, you know, maybe my views will change in a month or two and I feel better than the earlier this week, but it's just like, you know, when you're in a relationship, you see how people interact, like they invite you over to their friend's game night or whatever. You see how they interact with their friends. You see how their friends are. You see the type of company they like to keep. They interact with their parents. That's a huge, you know, these are pivotal things in relationships where it's like, imagine doing all that and they're fucking awful to their mom or like they are spitting in waiter's face. Their friends are trash. Like, and it's just like all these things are preventing you from like kind of doing the early stages. So it's just like, I don't know. I'm usually not the, you know, negative, but it's just like, it's hard not to think about that. Like, it's really, it's really daunting and it really kind of makes you like, ah, dating's tough, but at the same time, like, you got to put yourself out there too, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if we want to go into little tips section. Yeah, let's go tips. Okay, so I just came up with some tips from my own noggin. Um, So here they are. Here they are, world. (laughs) Um, If you've been thinking about dating lately, give it a try. New experiences never hurt. And that's always been kind of my outlook, COVID or no. Like, if you've never tried Tinder, give give it a try. Why not? Like, no better time like the present, Um, which moves us to our next point. If you decide to give these new experiences a try, be honest with yourself and with the people you are talking to about your expectations and how much you're willing to extend yourself. Um, I definitely saw this somewhat during, you know, being on apps while COVID. And it will be kind of like, you know, you're talking to someone regularly and then they kind of disappear for a while and then they pop up saying stuff like, you know, I just had a really hard week or I didn't really feel like talking to someone. And that's fine. Completely great in voicing those things. But at the same time, if you're finding that you cannot talk to someone because you cannot give any extra emotion, then maybe dating is not for you right now. Um, Be open to talking on the phone and FaceTiming. I think this goes without, you know, be open to it can't really hang out with people all the time so like don't be afraid of talking on the phone which millennials are so afraid of talking on the phone have you guys ever heard this before is this just i, I heard, heard that but i have i love talking on the phone yeah. no like i feel like if, i feel like if we talk on the phone like i'm okay with it but i like phone conversations that have like an agenda or like like we were like filling each other in on stuff that's happened because i feel like there is a danger where you get on the phone and it's just like three hours of just like jumble jumble where I'm just like I can't the only time, during COVID yeah the only time I'm not open to it and this happened a whole bunch before COVID actually is when you meet a guy on one of these dating apps and immediately he's like let's talk. FaceTime you yeah no oh my god that's so annoying if I'm a real person like you can do that and I don't know, you can do that in like a less aggressive way as as soon as we start texting, be like, let me FaceTime you. It's like all right. <laughs> FaceTiming, just like, bro, it's eight o'clock at night. Like my like, let's just meet up tomorrow. <laughs> like let's meet up tomorrow, bro, chill. But anyway, next, have some phone sex. That was my favorite one. I saw that and I was like, Yes, Janae, just put it in there. You know, I feel like we're not going to be getting physical for like a little while. So as long as you trust that person and you feel like you know them enough, have some phone sex. Maybe send some pictures over Snapchat if you don't necessarily trust them to not send your photos to their friends. 
Also don't... remember, you can save Snapchat though. That oh, that that pedophile Snapchat. dude found that out the hard way on on the actor. Forgot his name. Oh, Chris Diella. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, did you see that video where he was like, "Wait, you can." You can save things on Snapchat? No, no, no. I did not see. I, I saw the allegations. So I was like, I'm not diving into this just yet. His, it looked like his his spirit left his body because he realized, oh, shit. Like, and I'm didn't not- he play, like, a molester and stuff? In, a multiple? in, in you. But he play. I think, also in Workaholics or something. Mm. It was definitely more than one thing. That's just too close. Yep. It's weird. But, yeah. Um, yeah, like, even, but, like, Janae, like, even you said, like, if you trust, like, you trust someone, but, like, even if, like, you say, like, you don't, like, know that person that well, you just started talking, um, like, if y'all want to just, like, sex a little, like, I don't think there's any harm in that. I don't think there's any harm in it whatsoever if you are a consenting adult who is smart enough to not put your face in those pictures. Like, mm-hmm. it's not Degrassi. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly and truthfully... Have some fun. Let your tits out. Like, it's 2020. Coronavirus is here. If you need a release, get you a damn release. Um, next, be smart about meeting up. Um, do you both have roommates? Do you live with older people? Are you wearing masks? Are you using hand sanitizer? These are just questions to ask yourself when you embark on these journeys of meeting strangers during COVID-19. And then my last point. Give yourself grace. This is a hard time. Um, If it's too hard to talk to someone just because um, they're all up in your phone, don't hesitate to cut it off. Like if you're having a hard time juggling different relationships with people, then like I said earlier, maybe dating's not for you, but don't beat yourself up about it. Like this is a lot for all of us to handle right now. Um, And we don't have time to be wasting other people's time. Like, after COVID is over, killer hornets might come or, like, aliens or something. So, I don't know. Just don't take me to the king. Okay. (laughs) That's how I feel about that. Um, Okay. I I went over most of the thoughts and tips. But the two things I did want to say was take time to really think about what you want and learn from the past, which I think Amari and Janae, you guys said that you were kind of taking this time. I think that was really smart. Um, And then the other thing is, like, always consider your mental health before dating. Like, I feel like we live in a society where it's pressure to date multiple people and in a relationship or all this stuff. And it's like, it's okay if you're not feeling it mentally, like, do not engage in that type of culture. I really wish we would be more vocal about that than the whole gotta date 10 people at one time, like I said before. But, like, really consider your mental health um, during this time. And my last question or thing before we get into social responses is, I was talking about this with another group of friends, but how do you guys feel about like exes reaching out during specifically COVID? Because I'm not going to lie. I was a little offended that none of my exes or ex flings contacted me. Cause I was like, everyone has other oh, exes are contacting me. And I was like, does no one like me? Did you guys ever like me? Or I was just like, I, you know, I'm a little offended. Or yeah. is it that, you know, that I'm never going to respond, which just, which is true. I'm probably not going to respond or like you. So I was like, maybe you actually respect me. And you're like, he is not with the shits. She Don't contact her. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that their thoughts behind reaching out to you or not is, and this is going to sound harsh, but I don't mean it in a harsh way. It's not going to be, be harsh. harsh. No, it's, it's not, but it made me feel bad just because yeah. everyone was like my, all this stuff. And then I was just like, it just made me reassess like the type of relationship I had with them yeah yeah and and don't don't go down that road like it's so not worth it because it's over I mean that's true we were talking before this podcast and I've had an ex reach out several times and it's just kind of like navigating that situation is another emotional task that I just don't feel equipped <laughs> to do right now. So it's honestly more of a headache than if he didn't reach out, bro. And honestly, I should be happy about it, but I was just like, oh, here's yeah. the ego coming in. Yeah. yeah. Don't like don't take it too personal. Cause I think the one the one like thread is that like the people who are reaching out, it's because they're kind of messy. And the people True. who are responding, it's because they're also too kind of messy. And I am that person. And I am in that situation. So, like, it's like, I I mean, 
yeah, you're kind of like, oh, like, why aren't they? But also, like, I think they're, you know, the people who probably aren't reaching out have a more understanding and a respect for how that relationship ended and are choosing to abide by that. Um, yeah, the other people who are crawling their way back in, it's because it's, it's like, a little messy. Okay, I'm glad you said that. That made me feel a little better. <laughs> And I should have, I, not that I care that much, like, I don't, I'm trying to move forward, but I was just, like, it just made me think, because people were bringing it up, and I was, like, oh, but that because, literally hasn't happened. No, because it's, like, one, like, okay, are they bored? Two, are they reaching out because they, they feel like they messed up, like, a good thing, and is it, do they only feel like, like they messed up a good thing because their prospects in the future of having another good thing are slim now because of COVID? True, and I'd be more offended if you did that. Right, so there's, like, all these, like, you know, different factors that go into, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it as a, to say there's anything like, you know, on your part. Just okay. Like, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't, you should not waste any time thinking that it has anything to do with you whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Cause either, either, either way, it's annoying as hell. True. Either way, for whatever reason, it's annoying as hell, especially if you're over, if you're done, if you just want to be past that situation, it's like, ugh. And especially if you're not even over it too, like if you have lingering feelings and this person comes back in, you also might, you, you knowing you might enter a situation that you know is not healthy for you or good for you. That's but, true. Yeah. It's yeah. the universe looking out. It's mm-hmm. not Kia. It's looking out. Okay. That made me feel better. I'm glad we talked about this. This was <laughs> low key my therapy guys. I'm not going to lie. Cause it was an emotional week. <laughs> Um, why are they reaching out to me (laughs) see i told you guys i have an ego i'm also trying to address my flaws it's a flaw i have a big ego so i'm just saying um do we go want to go into uh audience responses okay guys well we asked you you know some things on twitter instagram i'll go first amari um i i did a poll on Twitter and I asked you guys has the coronavirus pandemic affected your views on dating um 27.3 percent of you guys said it has no effect uh 63.6 percent of you guys said views are more negative and 9.1 percent said positive more positive I'm really happy about that um and then I asked wait what did you say I said yay nine percent I know I honestly thought it was gonna be zero I'm not gonna lie <laughs> Um, so I asked like a little more open-ended and oh wow someone said I got a good story for y'all but she didn't say it shit sorry that's my <laughs> bad I didn't see that response till now um, but then I asked on um, my personal Twitter and someone said girl I don't know nowadays it's looking like the supermarket is the spot then <laughs> my one friend responded to that and said the supermarket is the new club. <laughs> and then someone else said, I don't know, it's peaks and valleys. I was for sure optimistic in the beginning. I had more time and I even decided to give dating apps a try. Then I gave dating apps a try and now I feel hopeless. <laughs> someone else said, honestly hopeless, but trying to be more half glass full now that things are slowly opening up. Honestly, dating apps, dating apps have such a way of making things feel uniquely hopeless. Once again, everyone should give dating apps a try. Like every, everyone should <laughs> have to try because I think everyone should know what it feels like to get rejected based off of your looks, but also have. Damn. Pre- <laughs> <laughs> so wait, <laughs> you know, wait, Rachel reclined. <laughs> also have positive experiences with dating someone and you're like oh my god look at all these matches i got they're hot what does that mean i'm hot wow everyone should have that experience but dating apps have a way of just making it like damn this is hopeless i i might be no no no, i definitely feel that every time i'm like okay i'm gonna go back on the apps and then i get on the apps i'm like okay i need to get off because like you either get a bunch of matches you get a whole bunch of rejections or the matches like don't end up you know being a good thing so, yeah. Um, but Kia, was that just that was on Twitter and Instagram? That was just Twitter. Was I just can do Twitter. the Instagram if you want. Okay, yeah, you can start off with your Instagram. Okay, so I asked it on the personal Instagram, and let's see what you guys said. I said, "Has the pandemic changed your views on dating?" Forty-eight percent said yes, and fifty-two percent said no. 
So that's quite interesting. I'll read some of the responses. I said, explain why or why not. Someone said, because people think to play with others' emotions. I think that's a little internal. Okay. Being alone at this time makes me appreciate the close people I admire. That's what someone said. If nothing changed you during this rough year, LOL, people need a wake-up call. Someone said, men were annoying before COVID-19 and continue to remain annoying during COVID-19. <laughs> Someone said, already married. Someone said, it's actually pushing people to be more creative with dating. Um, someone said, nobody wants me. <laughs> someone said, <laughs> never been on a... <laughs> someone said, never been on a date and just want to put myself out there. Um, someone else said, maybe since people can't see each other, it can make them actually get to know each other, like love is blind. Mm -hmm. And someone said, I really got in touch with myself and I really like myself. So any boyfriend would have to be addictive. Also, I just realized, guys, I said it was emotional week. I did apply to be on Love is Blind. It's Chicago, <laughs> this... though. So no, it's not. It's like... New York City. Oh, really? I thought it was Chicago. <laughs> nope. Wow. There's, they're casting for New York City, and I only did it because I was in this Facebook group, and this girl was like, hey, I'm the casting director. We're doing no, no, applications. No, they need to and pick I... you, and then you need to like have the, o the Oreos on your friend episode when you make it to the finals. I honestly <laughs> never seen the show. I should cut this out. But anyway, I'll tell you guys. Um, <laughs> you have to watch it. It's really Rachel good. got me addicted, and it was not cool of her. Yeah, I was like, let me just because everyone was talking about it. Let me just watch and see. I probably will watch. Like, I actually do hope I get on the show. I'm trying to manifest it. Me too. But we'll see. Yeah, I will watch it. I will watch it. But it was just like, you know what? It's on my Facebook. What's the odds of like Wait, a casting when they, director? When are they? When are they recording? I don't know. They said it's only three weeks. Um, they said that the girl was actually like she was in charge of the guys, which I told her like, oh, Mister said I'll do the application. Here's my Instagram. She's like, cool. I'll put in a good word. And then she was like, yeah, I'm in charge of doing the guys. And it seemed like she was like struggling to find like good guy options. Mm. Like she was asking people to like recommend your brother, recommend your best friend, because like. So I was just like, okay, that's pretty mm. interesting. Interesting. I'll move yeah. back to New York just to have a chance on it. <laughs> you should apply. You should really apply. Someone told me that they think I'd be good at Love is Blind, but I already know what I would do. I would say we're not getting married, but we can date afterwards. Like, that's the most logical thing to me. I'm just like YOLO DOLO. <laughs> that's how I feel right now. So I'm just like, let's give it a try. Ooh. So that's I'm great. trying to manifest it. Good vibes in the universe. All yeah. around. All around. Okay, so I asked the same question on our, our social and on my personal, but I'll start off with our social first. So I said, has COVID-19 impacted your views on dating? 73% said yes, and 27% said no. And some of their answers include, which I thought some people were very funny. Someone said, um, I can't fuck anyone until there's a vaccine and someone needs to tell my hormones this. Um, I felt that. Someone said, less likely to bullshit now. I am more direct in what I want. We've definitely covered that today. Someone else said, I met my boyfriend in May online. For me, it's not playing the game of dating, tiptoeing around stuff. So I guess more, be more direct. And then someone else says, I just have less interest now. And that was on our so-called Oreos page. On my personal page, I think the numbers were slightly different. Um, sorry, I'm pulling up the, I do a lot of stories, guys. So it's hard to pull it up. Okay, so someone said, so the poll was 87% said yes and 13% said no. And I think I only got one response. Oh, no, I got two responses for why or why not. Someone says it's made people make fast decisions on how serious or not serious their relationship is. And another person said, realizing that dates and men are not an essential service. Wow. Oh, I love that. Hey. <laughs> They're not essential, guys. I mean, unless you want a baby, I guess. No, not even really. Mm -hmm. No, they're still, they're still kind of essential because you need sperm at some point. Yeah, but you could go to the sperm bank if you really well, you don't want to deal with their emotions. Yeah, adopt. You don't really need them. Yeah. yeah. So those were... I, I love the responses from people. I thought they were really good. Yeah, you guys are funny. Keep engaging with us. Yes, keep it I'm up. not salty. <laughs> um, Rachel, do you want to give us some mental health talk? Yes. 
So I found this article on joinonelove.org and it, it posted an article about toxic relationships titled Relationship Trouble. Is it your partner or your mental health condition? Here's how to know the difference. So one, unhealthy relationships may be unusually intense. When our mental health is out of balance, we crave st stability. And though rushing into things with your partner may feel like a quick fix, it's not. Child Mind Institute psychologist, Dr. Alexandra Hamlet says, it's important to set ground rules in the beginning of your relationship to set a tone or boundaries that ensure the relationship moves at a pace you're both comfortable with. Describing what you need, especially when it comes to mental health, helps you get on the same page with your partner. Two, unhealthy relationships may feel isolating. Dr. Hamlet says isolation is how unhealthy relationships are able to stay unhealthy, and the first step to ending it is recognizing it. If you're starting to see yourself censor things with certain people who you know are usually helpful and compassionate, then you really know you're in an unhealthy situation. Try to notice those changes in your own behavior. Three, unhealthy partners are manipulative. Manipulation is when someone tries to unfairly influence or control your actions and feelings in a way that benefits them. In an unhealthy relationship, you may notice power imbalances build or feel like everything depends on keeping your partner happy by putting your own feelings on the back burner. Oftentimes, in an unhealthy relationship, one party uses strategies to achieve their own goals and needs that and needs and those tactics are often ineffective at maintaining a healthy, stable union. Four, unhealthy partners may gaslight you. Gaslighting is an emotional abuse tactic that unhealthy partners can use to make you second guess yourself. If it's happening to you, you might think, maybe I'm just overreacting. Every time something your partner does makes you uncomfortable, or you might find yourself apologizing for things that aren't actually your fault. And lastly, seek outside help if you believe you're in a toxic relationship. Even if you may need to bring in the support of a therapist or trusted friend, know that you have what it takes to know whether your partner or mental health condition is behind the uneasiness in your relationship. Trust your gut. Ask for help when you need it. Very important. Very important. Amen. Wait, what was the thing you said about isolation? Were you saying that that contributes to um, a toxic relationship? or? Yes. Yeah, so um, basically, if your partner is making you feel like you can't reach out to your friends or they like kind of kind of kind of like controlling you and making you um, just be only available to them. So if you're like a social person and you're always hanging out with your friends and family and you get into this relationship and your partner's like, oh, like, why are you always hanging out with your friends and family? You can't hang out with them. You should just only hang out with me. Like, like that, if they're, if they're isolating you, then that's a problem. That's a sign of um, toxicity. And that can really happen, like, especially now, like if you live with mm -hmm. a toxic partner and it's like, they could really like be like, well, it's, you literally can't see anyone else and like well, that's, yeah. what, that's why there's been like a lot of discussion or like news about you know like domestic, domestic uh, violence. violence and like the increase in how you know like not home isn't safe for everyone yeah yeah so sad. um i'll jump right into my segment next um subject line is my friends care but not enough so rose writes i'm really struggling with two of my white friends both of these people have been in my life for years. Like we met in grade school and I was even a bridesmaid at one of their weddings. Since the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor have been heavily politicized, I've been taking note of a lot of my white friends' behaviors. These two friends have been vocal on social media and have reached out to lend their support and assure me that they have been trying to educate themselves. But when it came time to go to a march or protest, neither of them pulled through. One friend says her anxiety is too bad for crowds, and the other is worried about the health of her older relatives. Although I know I can't necessarily get angry at these two very valid reasons, I can't help but feel like they are excuses. I can't help but feel that there would be other excuses bubbling up 
if not for these ones. As they both talked about not being able, um, sorry, as they both talked about not being able to go, my inner voice was screaming, you can't get over this for me. My humanity is constantly being called into question and you have anxiety. These are my last two friends from my hometown for a reason, but now I'm really grappling with the idea of cutting them off. Am I bugging for this one? Oh, this is such a good question. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm struggling with it a little bit, answering it. Um, Because my, the biggest thing that I pulled from this is that you felt that there would be another excuse had it not have been for the anxiety and the older parents. Um, And to me, that is the issue that you doubted your friends and thought that there would be another excuse. And for me, for that specific reason, I say, maybe it's time to reevaluate your friendship with them. Because you, obviously, to to me, this seems to be rooted in something deeper than um, just them not being able to march. It seems like you have other reason to doubt their alignment with social justice and trying to spark change as white people in this country. Um, So I think that's something to examine. I definitely agree with you on that, Janae. And I think because also the the hard thing too is that like, um, I as a black person have not gone to a march and that is because I live with two autoimmune compromised people. Um, I also do have major anxiety in crowds. Like on a good day, I'm not going into a crowd of people. Um, But I also think we have this idea as like, your your lane in this movement may not be protesting. Your lane may be, you know, rallying behind the scenes to organize protests or to, you know, like do the background work of education. For me, I feel like more so my lane is maybe like writing about these issues. And unfortunately, I feel like there's this, I found myself personally being reaching more people with my writing uh, than like posting up in Beeville, which also I'm scared of because it's Beeville. Um, um but um so yeah I think it's hard but I think like Janae said the problem is that you have a feeling that if it wasn't COVID or if it wasn't some this particular moment it would be another excuse so I think that that's what you need to dig into and also like it could have been a fair question to be like okay guys you're not you're you're not protesting you're not doing this but like what are you doing in uh, substitute of the protesting like are you donating are you t- having these conversations with families like what are you doing to make up for the fact that you're not putting your body out there um, so yeah yeah I agree with that it's like the underlying of like I feel like they would have had another excuse so like deep down you know they like actually don't care like they're doing that whole like I could post it on social media but I'm not really gonna do the work and honestly I say flat out ask them Like, I would honestly just ask, like, hey, if it wasn't for that, would you actually really be going out? Like, they could lie. I'm just saying. But it could be, you could also be like, okay, so what else are you doing instead since crowds give me anxiety? And I I feel like, you know, you want to support the movement. I'm just curious how you want to go about supporting it since crowds isn't really your thing. Because I I think that's okay to hold people accountable. Like, and if they're not really, like, and you still see that, you know, they have – a bunch of excuses then maybe it's time to reevaluate if that's the type of people you want to bring into your life um and like we did a whole episode on the eight million ways you could be an ally so it's not just like crowds and like amari said you could use a platform if you're good at writing write something if you're good at you know podcasting if you have social media flowers do something but we you know we address the million ways that people you know don't have to have an excuse Rachel, did you want to say something? Oh, I forgot my microphone was moved, muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know about cutting them off right away, but, you know, you know them better than we know your relationship with them. So if you, you feel like this itch and it's, you know, not just this, it's multiple things, then maybe it is time right. to cut it off. And also, like, you – the person mentioned that they like reached out to her um, and that they've been like posting on social. But I think there's also this misconceptions like, yeah, you, you, I feel like white people will sometimes feel like they're doing the work because they're reaching out to like their sole black friend or like the black people in their life. And like, that's not like, yeah, it's great that you care about me, but like, I need you to care about all black people right now. Yeah. So while like, while I appreciate you reaching out to me, like, what are you doing to extend yourself to the black community as a whole? 
And that, can... That's such so beautifully said. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely beautifully said, because I will say that, like, I've had some great conversations with my white friends um, during this time. But at the same time, it is a little bit frustrating to feel like, oh, you're reaching out. Are you reaching out to me right now just for pity? Kind of like, so I can validate you and tell you, oh, you're not, you're not a bad friend. You're not a bad white person. Or are you reaching out to me because you know, this is a shitty time and you'd reach out to me regardless. You know, it's, it's definitely an interesting thing to be a black person right now and to have white people in your life. And it's like, I don't, it's kind of like, I don't know who I can trust. I don't know who I can't trust. I don't know who's just trying to usurp energy from me and, and validation. Um, but anyway, if all hearts and minds are clear, I think it's time to wrap up, ladies. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's episode. Uh, follow us on all of our social media at So Called Oreos. And you can email us, shoot us a comment, shoot us a question, just say hello um, at so called Oreos at gmail.com. Um, also, fill out our survey. It's on all of our social media. Help us help you um and you can listen to us on soundcloud itunes spotify and google play and please remember to like rate and subscribe and leave a review until then bye bye, bye, bye y'all. Y'all.